Hello, my zebras and spoonies. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. I am glad that you are here. Today, I'm going to be talking about bras. If you aren't among the bra-wearing folk, feel free to take a stroll or you can pull up a chair and get a better idea what goes on with other folks' clothing. The thing is that bras are notorious for causing problems, and those of us with chronic illness are often more prone to having those issues. So let's talk about some of the problems that bras cause and what you can do about it. So my little warning is that this post is going to be talking about undergarments, breasts, and the way that these things can make us feel. So if you're not comfortable with any of those topics, then this post is not for you. All right, that out of the way. The first thing that I have to say about bras is that no one should ever feel that they are required to wear one. Um, if they're not serving you, don't use them. However, if you feel that they offer you physical support or emotional armor or a comfortable sense of modesty or they make you feel sexy, then by all means, put one on. But please, make sure that they are serving a purpose for you and that you aren't feeling obligated to wear one just because society expects it of you. We're being told way too often how we should dress when most of the time it just isn't anyone else's business. <sighs> so there are many alternatives to wearing bras if you feel that you want to wear something under your shirts, but would rather it not be a bra. I mean, you can go with nothing under your shirt, and that's completely fine. But if you're looking for other options, I got you. You can go with the simple undershirt or camisole. They will provide you with an additional layer that will increase coverage. These are a great option if you're looking for an increased sense of modesty. However, they're not a good option for providing support. There are many of these that claim that they have built-in bras and built-in breast support, but they are lying to you. This type of garment is simply not going to be able to support the weight of your breasts. This is especially true if they're made of stretchy fabrics. Many camisoles are a good option if you're looking for something uh, to help you feel sexy. Uh, many are made of satins or other types of silky kind of like fabrics. And many have really nice lacy trims. But they also come in plain cotton styles if you're not looking for the sexy stuff. If you're looking for support, but you hate bras, you might want to consider trying a corset. Hear me out, hear me out. Corsets and bras are both designed to bear the weight of your breasts, but these garments are built in very different ways. Finding that one is uncomfortable doesn't mean that the other one will be. A bra primarily supports the weight of the breasts with the band, which shifts some of the weight bearing to your ribs rather than the shoulder and upper back. A corset bears the weight of the breasts with boning, which shifts most of the weight bearing to your hips. Having the weight of your breasts being carried on your hips versus your ribs, it, you know, might be more comfortable for you. It's worth consideration. Another option for support is a compression garment. In the fashion world, these are usually referred to as shapewear. Uh, sometimes they are misleadingly called shaper bras. These garments are made from compression fabrics, and they're going to compress your breasts against your chest to give a mild amount of support. They are not going to give you a lift or a rounding of your breasts, but they will keep your breasts from being as mobile while you're moving about. The downside to these is that they are often difficult to put on. Additionally, they are compression garments. And by definition, that means that they are putting pressure onto your skin. These are not a good option for those people with fragile skin or those who have decreased sensation. The other type of compression top that you may want to consider is the chest binder. These are compression garments that are designed to flatten and compress the breast tissue. These are most often used by individuals looking for a flatter chest appearance. However, they also offer the advantage of a lot of support. These garments are different than shaper tops because they apply pressure in different locations in the garment. Shaper wear will have the most compression on the stomach and under the sides of the breast with the goal of increasing the appearance of an hourglass figure. 
a chest binder will have the most compression across the fullest part of the breast, which will reduce the appearance of the breast size. Again, compression garments are not a good option for those with fragile skin or those with decreased sensation. If you're interested in a chest binder, I recommend that you go over to the fittest and read their binding 101 on their website. It's great. It covers a lot of really good material. So bralettes are often classified as bras, but they are not really the same type of garment. These garments are not going to provide support. They're not built for that. They will provide you an additional coverage if you're looking for something to help with modesty. Um, and they're also a great option if you're looking for something to help you feel sexy. They are often made with the same fabrics and laces as bras, which can give you a, a similar sexy look as if you were wearing a bra. There's also the option of just using nipple covers. These are usually marketed as a nursing product. Uh, these won't offer any support, but they will help with modesty since they will keep your nipples from showing through your shirt. Uh, there are many options on the market, but generally speaking, I would recommend using one of the silicone products. The silicone ones are more likely to stay put without needing adhesives, which can be really irritating to the skin. They are also very easy to clean. They are just a quick rinse and they're good to go. The downside to the silicone is that they are not going to absorb any moisture. So Lily Pads makes a good silicone nipple cover and you can buy them over on Amazon. Um, if you have a problem with moisture, you may need one of the fabric covers with adhesives. However, they do make uh, nipple covers that adhere to your shirt rather than your skin. And a Minimism is one of the best fabric nipple covers out there, and they adhere to your shirt. You can also get those over on Amazon. Uh, there's also the option of adhesive uh, bras. These are really not bras and are not going to provide much support. Depending upon the design, some can provide a small amount of lift, but mostly these are just oversized nipple covers. Uh, while they are an option, this isn't one that I personally recommend to anyone. They're especially bad for those with large breasts or skin issues. If you're going to try this kind of product, I'd recommend avoiding the style that is um, two separated cups and that you scoop the breast up and that they have a tab that then sticks up on the upper part of your chest. Um, this style will shift all the weight of your breast to the skin of your upper chest and it will put you at a really high risk of a shearing skin injury. Uh, the single most important thing that you can do to prevent your bra causing you problems is to be sure that you are wearing a bra that properly fits you. I'm not going to go into all the details about how to figure out how to tell if your bra is properly fitting you or not because there is already an excellent resource out there to help you with this. You can go over to the website, Her Room, and if you click on the fitting room, you can get more information on how to find a bra that fits you the way that it should. They cover breast types, bra types, how to do your measurements, all of that. Um, having the right fit really is the starting point because making sure your bra fits often resolves many other issues that you're having because of your bra. Having a chronic illness all too often means that you have chronic pain. Uh, if your bra fits you properly, it will not be the cause of your pain. However, it is completely possible for a bra to exacerbate pain that is being caused by your chronic illness. The first option to, ad to address this problem is to just not wear a bra. Uh, consider one of the bra alternatives that I've already discussed. Uh, there are three areas that bras primarily exacerbate pain in, and that's your shoulders, upper back, and your ribs. If you find that your bra is increasing your shoulder pain and you're sure that you have the right fitting bra, I recommend you considering your shoulder straps. How your straps sit on your shoulders will have a major impact on your body. Put on your bra and look at yourself in the mirror. Look at how your straps look and sit on your shoulder and consider the following. The strap should be firmly against your skin but not pressing down into it. If your straps are creating a visible depression 
Uh, they're bearing too much weight of your of your breasts. This could be that the straps are too tight, um, but it could be a fitting issue as well. If you're having this problem, consider trying a bra with a wider band. Um, a long line bra style being the widest possible. The advantage to a long line bra is that they completely remove the weight bearing from the shoulders and many don't even have straps. So a long line or a bustier? Well, either will work, but you don't need a bustier to reduce the shoulder weight bearing. The difference between a long line and a bustier is that of waist shaping. A long line bra is one that extends over the rib cage and can be as low as the waistline. Some have boning, but most don't. Those with boning will offer more support, however. A uh, bustier is a full long line bra, that's one that goes to the waist, that also provides waist shaping with either compression or lacing or sometimes both. The waist shaping will have no effect on your shoulder pain. So it really doesn't matter which you get. And something to also keep in mind is that oftentimes companies blur the lines between the names of these garments. So even though there is a distinction between these garments, sometimes companies use them interchangeably. Remember that the wider your bra strap is, the more it will distribute the weight and pressure across your shoulder rather than creating a focal point, which is just going to increase your pain in your shoulder. So get a bra that has padded straps. This will help reduce the pressure that the strap is applying to the skin of your shoulder. When your skin on your shoulder is being pressed and sheared downward, it creates micro injuries to the underlying structure that can then lead to having pain. Additionally, this can lead to a tightening of your shoulder muscles in an effort to compensate for the sensation of pressure that you're feeling in your shoulders. Uh, you can also purchase bra strap or shoulder pads. There's a surprisingly diverse amount of options out there to add padding to your bra straps. There are ones that slide over the strap. You can get them made for, from either silicone or fabric. There are ones meant for uh, protecting a portacalf that could easily be used up on the shoulder. Uh, there are ones that are shoulder pads that are made from silicon. You know, they, they're meant to sit up over here more, you know, from back in the 80s. Um, but there's also ones that are made of fabric. And if none of those work for you, there are a whole bunch that are intended for bag straps. And you could also try those. They could easily Velcro or slide onto your bra strap. And you can... You can buy all of these on Amazon.com. There's a bunch of options available on their site. Uh, you can also try a racer back bra. This changes the way that the bra strap lays over the shoulder. A racer back is when the bra straps connect to each other before connecting to the bra's band. This makes it so that the line of the strap follows the line of your trapezius muscle, which often makes it more comfortable for that muscle to bear weight. If your bra isn't a racer back, you can use a racer back bra clip to bring the straps of your bra together. Uh, so just kind of in summary, because that was a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, here's a list of things to try for reducing shoulder pain in context of wearing a bra. You can choose not to wear a bra. You can wear a long line or bustier bra. Uh, you can get bras that have wide straps or padded straps. You can get strap or shoulder padding to put underneath your strap. You can get a bra that has a racer back, or you can get a racer back clip to make any bra into a racer back. So if you have increased upper back pain while wearing a properly fitted bra, you can try all the same adjustments that will help with shoulder pain because they can also help with upper back pain. The additional thing to consider is trying a corset rather than a bra. A corset will shift all of the weight bearing of your breasts off of your upper body and onto your hips. This can go a long way to alleviating the pain in your upper body. 
It is a very supportive garment that can also help with a hypermobile spine. The largest downside to a corset is that they are going to restrict your movement until you get used to them. They're made from heavy, stiff fabrics that don't have any stretch. This fabric is not going to move with you, which is why the garment is going to provide so much support. But most people are used to wearing loose-fitting clothes made from stretchy fabrics. Thus, of course, it will be a big change to get used to. However, it can provide support similar to a clamshell brace. The thing to keep in mind is that the more bracing or support that you have, the more the garment will restrict your movement. If you're having increased rib pain while you're wearing a properly fitting bra, you can try all the things that will help with shoulder and upper back pain as they also tend to help with rib pain. But you might want to consider trying a compression garment. Either shapewear or a chest binder would be options. A chest binder would likely support uh, all but your floating ribs while shapewear is likely to be the reverse. Thus, it would depend on which ribs were causing you trouble as to which would provide you the best support. Uh, compression on the ribs is a well-researched way to alleviate rib pain. There are numerous styles of rib belts out there that you can try. There are those that are designed to provide compression that lie beneath the bust line, and these will provide similar compression to shapewear. There are also those that provide compression and they sit above the breasts. Um, a chest binder would provide similar support to those. When you wear a rib belt, they will offer no breast support, but they can help with your rib pain. But if you want any kind of breast support when you're wearing a rib belt, you still need to wear a bra. Uh, the advantage to wearing compression garments is that you will get some breast support while getting that additional rib support. So this may allow you to tolerate removing your bra, which has potentially been increasing your pain. So the other major problem that wearing a bra can exacerbate is having skin breakdown beneath your breast. The nature of a bra uh, has several factors that contribute to skin breakdown. Even a properly fitting bra can cause skin breakdown beneath the breast. However, if your bra fits properly, it will reduce the likelihood of this problem occurring. The two factors that a bra exacerbates is pressure and moisture. These are two major causes of skin breakdown. The first thing that you want to do is complete a skin check after you've worn your bra all day. A properly fitting bra should not leave any indentations or marks on your person when you've removed it. If your bra is leaving an impression of itself on your person, it is too tight. Correcting this will go a long way to helping you heal your skin. There are bras that are designed to reduce the moisture beneath your breasts. There are going uh, to be bras that are made with moisture wicking, wicking fabrics or ones that are designed to allow more airflow by having um, mesh venting. Don't assume that a padded bra will absorb moisture as most padding is actually um, not made to serve this function. And oftentimes, padded bras will make moisture worse because they will make your breasts warmer. Bras that lift and separate your breasts will allow more air to reach your skin and will reduce skin-to-skin -skin contact, both of which will help reduce moisture. You can try using a body powder, but avoid the use of a product that includes perfumes or dyes as they can make skin breakdown worse. If you want to make a great body powder at home, you can do that by mixing one cup of cornstarch with one teaspoon of baking soda. The cornstarch will wick moisture, while the baking soda will help manage any odors. 
There are also bra liners that can help with moisture. The best ones are made from bamboo and or cotton as they are less likely to cause skin irritation. Uh, they also provide the additional benefits of adding a small amount of padding uh, between your bra band and the wound. Because it can be pretty painful to have your bra band pressing against skin that is open. If these things don't help or your skin breakdown is getting worse, you should go see your doctor to have your skin checked. It can be difficult to tell the difference between a fungal infection and a moisture-related skin injury. If there's a fungal infection, reducing the moisture is often enough to allow your body to fight the infection off. However, there are times that these infections just require medications. Whew, I got like all long-winded on this post today. So, you know, thanks for coming and spending time with me. And thanks for staying through to the end. I hope that you find peace and wellness. Until we talk again, you guys take care of yourselves. Bye.